Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. Last time we got all of the non-post-game moons, basically, in the Cab Kingdom, which is 15 out of 17 possible moons. Those are the ones you could get if, as soon as you got the Odyssey, you came back to the Cap Kingdom, basically. Uh, in this video, we're going to be getting all the post-game moons. So, the first thing we have to do to achieve that is actually go to another kingdom, which happens to be unlocked in the post-game, and if you haven't finished the game, you won't know about it, so... This video will involve some spoilers. If you're still here and you're not too worried about the spoilers, then off we go! Oh yeah, we have to cash in the moons from last time, because I didn't do that yet. That might unlock something, or it might not. 139 moons... No, it didn't. Uh, what happens is, as you put in more moons, you unlock various alternate costumes for Mario. Anyway, uh, where we're going is here. The Mushroom Kingdom. This unlocks as an option as soon as you've completed the storyline and gotten to the credits cutscene. Which I have, which is why I've gotten to it. Uh, so, we're just gonna head back over there. Should not take too long. And there's just a couple of things we have to do to activate the last couple of moons we want to get in the Cap Kingdom. Uh, basically, we won't be doing much else here for the moment. But to activate all the missing moons in the Cap Kingdom, we have to head over to the castle. There it is, Peach's Castle. Uh, the purple coins look exactly like they did in Mario 64, except, you know, higher quality. Uh, let's throw it out the front here, wearing a cute hat. Princess Peach has gone missing again! She packed her suitcase happy as can be and walked off. We can't find her anywhere. Where is she? she she's she packed her suitcase and went somewhere. She's probably gotten somewhere on purpose. Like, she wouldn't do that if she were being kidnapped, you know? It's just a saying. Uh, the one, there's one other thing we want to do while we're here, which is go inside the castle to hear the lovely remix of the classic music from Super Mario 64. The layout's sort of similar. Um, like, as you can see, the staircases are the same sort of a layout, but none of the doors are here. It's just the main room. Uh, anyway, there's a hint art over here, which, as you might guess from how it looks, is in the Cap Kingdom. So we're going to be doing that as well, at this point. Uh, those are the only things we're going to be doing in the Mushroom Kingdom right now. Talking to that toad outside unlocks a bunch of moons, and going to the Hintart there will let us do the Hintart in the Cap Kingdom. And that's all we're doing here for now, so off we go. Uh, yes, I have been to the castle yet, thank you. So yeah, back to the Cap Kingdom for now. We will be trying to get every moon in the Cap Kingdom. Um, one of them we can't actually get in the Cap Kingdom. There's a hint art in the Cap Kingdom and the actual moon is somewhere else, so we won't be able to get it while we're here, so we won't. Uh, we'll be getting everything else we can though, which should I think be all of the moons besides that one. Uh, Cappy's gonna remind us that the moon rock needs opening, so we'll be doing that. But before we do that, we're gonna head over towards this bridge here. Now, if you remember that hint art that we looked at a moment ago, you might have noticed that it looks a bit like that. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, which is that that's exactly where it's hidden. <laughs> what we need to do is stand in just the right spot on this bridge, which I think was just here? Not quite. There we go. And that gets us the first moon for the Mushroom Kingdom. And yes, that's what the moons from the Mushroom Kingdom look like. Da 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 da! Yeah! And it plays the classic jingle from Mario 64 when you get one. What a beautiful game this is. Anyway, since we talked to that toad outside the castle, Peach will now be over here. 
we can go talk to her. Look how great she looks in that outfit, honestly. Oh, Mario, glad to see you're still traveling. Tiana decided to take a trip around the world. Hmm, sounds gay. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Cute. So yeah, every time you meet Peach, she says something super gay about her trip with Tiara and gives you a moon for that kingdom, basically. As, and now she's hinting that we have to go to the Cascade Kingdom next, which we will, but not just yet. Uh, I'm gonna head this direction. So what happens with these moon rocks is, once you've done the storyline for an area, uh, or, you know, just come back to it if you didn't have any storyline, like this one, where we are now, uh, after completing the storyline for the whole game, it starts glowing like that one. And then all you got to do is get over there and whack it with your hat. Pretty straightforward. We just head, got to head this way. Flap, 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 flap. You get the idea. <laughs> And you just hit this hat, hit this with Cappy. Oh my goodness. Uh, I actually picked up a Princess Peach Amiibo just to save a bit of time in situations like this because every time you die, you lose your life up heart. We can just do this to get a fresh one. I won't be doing that too much because it's a little bit cheaty, but it'll save some time sometimes. So I might be doing it just to avoid having to go around and pick up life up hearts again. Uh, anyway, yeah, you just have to get a Power Goomba to go over there. I, I imagine there'd be a way to get there without one, but it, it looks pretty tricky. Probably like a Cappy Roll Jump or something, which is hard to do under the crouching conditions, so... So I'm just gonna get this Power Goomba again, and this time not mess it up. I say as I mess it up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um... I don't really need full health, so I won't bother using the amiibo again. It's kind of an easy mode of sorts, because every time you scan that amiibo, you will always get a life up heart. There's no time limit or anything. Uh, granted, the assist mode is probably about as helpful. In assist mode, your health automatically, automatically regenerates if you stand still for a little while. Uh, which, of course, doesn't happen in normal mode. Okay, let's... Yeah, I'm gonna avoid using the amiibo as much as possible, although it is handy sometimes. Okay, something's definitely wrong with my controller, because I didn't mean to uncapture just then. Hang on. Let me just fiddle with this rubber band a bit. Hopefully. Okay, I think that's the right position. I don't think I had it quite right. Oh, hang on. Oops. And now it's off entirely and Mario's standing. Hold on a second. Okay, that's better. I think. Okay, yeah, I, th I think that's all right. Anyway, uh, on with the game, on with the game. Uh, I'm just having a little trouble with this, uh, with the rubber band on my controller. It seems to be slipping a little bit and making me ground pound instead of just stay crouching, which is not supposed to do. Uh, because you actually have to press the button to ground pound, not just hold it. It takes a full Z press, not a half Z press. Uh, shaking the Procon makes you fly faster, but I think that just means you gain height faster rather than traveling forward faster. Although I'm not really sure. There we go. Anyway, yeah. So in each kingdom, there's a there's a rock like this. You just hit it with your cap. It plays this little cutscene. You can skip this, but I'm gonna play the first one just so you see what happens. It launches in space like that, there we go. And then it explodes. And all these moons come tumbling down. 
So yeah, the the rock from the moon was full of moons, so now there's a whole bunch of extra moons here to be collected. And one of them is coming towards us right now. Or is it? It's going the other way. It's hard to tell actually. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, you can see there's a little bird flying around over there in the distance. I think it'll fly by this platform. You need to hit that bird with a hat in order to get its moon out, and it's really annoying. Okay, it's not coming this way, so we won't do that just yet. Uh, but yeah, so once you open the moon rock, a whole bunch of extra moons show up all over the place. Uh, the map does tell you where they are, so you don't have to re like search places you've looked before. Uh, which is kind of annoying, honestly. I kind of wish it would just let you keep looking for moons, but, you know, it just tells you where they are. Uh, so here's one of them. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba yeah! This hat was here before, but it didn't have a moon in it until just now. Uh, ah. Okay, I've definitely got something not right with this rubber band today, because I keep accidentally uncapturing. That's not good. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, gonna respawn over here because that's where we were. I'll just fly back to the Odyssey to simplify things. Um, but yeah, like every every kingdom in the game has a moon rock somewhere that you can open up to get more moons out of it. Except the Mushroom Kingdom, actually. It just starts with a big number. Um, I think this bunny is new. And that'll give us a moon. Yep, there we go. Da-da-da! Yeah! Uh, I think there's a bunny probably in every kingdom. There's a lot of bunnies in the game. And you just chase them and they don't move. Uh, that's just some coins. Uh, there's another moon down there. Yeah! Okay. Probably the easiest way to get back up is just to go this direction. Yeah, there's some visible blocks here to help you get back up. Probably the most interesting, like, the most exciting part of the moon rock is it puts these little moon-style pipes everywhere, which lead to additional challenge rooms. Usually they're a bit harder than the ones in the regular game, which makes sense because it's the post game. Uh, you are supposed to roll here. Even if I weren't crouching, I would be forced to roll when I stepped onto this slope platform, which is interesting because it's like the only one in the game that does that. Most of them, you will just slide down rather than start rolling. Uh, there's two moons in here. I missed the first one. We've got to go back and try that again in a moment. And the second one is just here. Da 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 da! Yeah! So yeah, that one's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, Made everything on half of it, but the second half isn't that hard either. It might take me a couple tries, but it's not difficult. Uh, and Cappy will remember this place because I missed a moon here earlier. Yeah, you just have to carefully roll your way along the sledge here. Like that. Easy. It's just precision rolling, but it's, it's really not hard. You may as well just do this again, because there's a bunch of coins to be had. There we go. So that's that subroom done. Uh, I believe there are two such subrooms in the Cap Kingdom. Uh, let me have a look. Oh, maybe not. Um, what happens is, rather than having an X, it shows a little 2 if there's a place with two moons in it. And it doesn't look like there are any in this one. So that's interesting. Uh, where next? Let's go spin the hat. So that hat up there on the... Well, which I mean the, the one in the middle. There's one that's kind of sparkling there. It was broken before, and throwing Cappy at it would have no effect. But they have fixed it when we opened the moon rock, which means we can throw Cappy at it, like so. And a moon comes out. Yeah! 
Spin the hat, get a prize. <laughs> uh. Uh, there's another moon out there. It's possible to get that without capturing, but it's really, really hard. Uh. Basically, what you have to do is get the bird moon to reveal itself at a certain spot. Because collecting a moon resets your cap bounce. So you can do a cap bounce, grab the bird moon, then do another cap bounce in order to land on the sign. Uh, it's incredibly difficult and precise, and you've got to wait around for the bird to keep flying if you miss it. And I'm trying to hit this uh, Paragoomba here, but I have to keep jumping, and they fly at the same height as me, so it's a bit tricky. What I could probably do is go down here, that makes things a bit easier. Although I am now invisible because of the fog. There we go. Alright, so yeah, the easy way to get that moon is to get a Paragoomba and just fly over there. Which is also, of course, the intended way to get the moon. It can, however, be done captureless, we're just not doing that. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah! Uh, let's go get the notes moon over here as well. So yeah, the deal with this one is you're meant to get a Paragoomba, fly over here to hit that, which reveals all these notes. I don't think this one is doable without the Paragoomba. But maybe it is. And that reveals the moon. There we go. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah! Also, kind of a cute detail here. If you look at the Goombas closely, you can see that eyes are normally these little black circles. Whereas, when you capture a Goomba, they have these big blue eyes. Um, that works in pretty much every capture in the game. Everything gets Mario's eyes, which is a really cute detail. Okay, yeah, that moon's very easy to do with a capture. It's a lot harder to do without one, obviously. <laughs> uh, okay. How are we doing? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, every moon rock gives you a second layer of the Koopa, Koopa free running. So, like, you can do it again with harder opponents, basically. Which is good, because the first version is very, very easy. Um, okay, over here there's a timer challenge that's now been unlocked. This might be kind of hard, actually. Uh, because, like most timer challenges, you don't get cappy. And in this one, there's a little bit of platforming we have to do. To get the key. Like that, which reveals the moon. Oh no! Yeah, and then getting back before the time runs out. Uh, that might take a couple of tries. We'll see how we go. Um, none of these amiibo here are actually going to be helpful because it's falling off a ledge, so having life up parts or invulnerability won't actually help. Which is good, because I don't really want to cheat too much by using them. There we go. Okay, so you want to get onto this platform, and then just do a quick long jump to slow yourself down. Like that. Okay, then you haven't got much time. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, okay. So what you probably have to do... Hmm. I think the second part needs to be faster after I get the key. I need to be a lot quicker. Okay, if I roll forward really, really fast now, so I can get onto the other platform before... Oh no! <laughs> okay, okay, I, I think this is doable. It's just hard. <sighs> this can actually be done jumpless, so it's, it's definitely, I think, possible for anything that can be done jumpless to be done crouchless. Except for 2D sections that have a bit of a quirk to them. So, let's see how we go. Oh no! 
Okay, so it's really important to hit that key as fast as possible because it doesn't give you a whole lot of time to work with. Which is hard. Um, so let me see here. There's a timer challenge. There's another moon up there. Oh yeah, that one's easy. Um, I'll do that first, just so that we can make some more progress. Basically, there were some... <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so bad at video games. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, there were some coins down there. There are no longer coins down there. Instead, there's this sparkle in the ground, and when you ground pound there, the moon comes out. Yeah! Uh, and then we've got... There's one near Top Hat Tower. There's one on with the free running on top of Top Hat Tower, and there's one just in the corner there that you basically have to use Paragrim before. So, we're basically nearly done here, uh, and this video's... It's a decent length, really. Alright. Uh, but this timer challenge... This part is proving tricky. Uh, pretty much everything else should be pretty straightforward. But this one might be... A bit of a showstopper. We'll see how we go. Uh, well that's not good. <laughs> Yeah, if you roll off the edge at the wrong angle like that, you yeah, you're just just gonna die. So don't don't do that. Roll off the edge at the right angle instead. That's my advice. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Uh This would be a lot easier with Cappy, obviously. Uh Okay, it's possible to get out there and back, but I didn't actually get the keys, so I don't get the moon. Um, but that proves it's possible to make the movements you need to make in time, basically. <sighs> it's just hard to gain enough height to get the key and then make it to the moon. I'm convinced it's entirely possible, it's just difficult, technically, to do this in time. Because, yeah, most of the timer challenges, you have, like, plenty of time to do it as a normal player. But if you have restrictions, like crouching, it becomes a lot harder to do things quickly. Dive, 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 dive. Yes! Woo! <laughs> During the cutscene just there, like, while the moon was appearing, I was just mashing the Y button. Like, Mario, come on, you have to die. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, the rest are at the top. Uh, to get the other few moons, we basically need to climb Top Hat Tower. Uh, we can just walk to the top, so we might because there's nothing to do inside that we haven't done already. Uh, although there's actually a moon, moon, a moon. Yes, a moon. Wow. <laughs> there's actually a moon way over here in the fog. Just right in the corner. Basically, this is the edge of the kingdom that you've got to fly over to. Just to get this moon. Yeah! So, to get the last two, we basically just need to go to the top of Top Hat Tower. You cannot climb that with a Paragoomba. It's too tall, I believe, for that to work. Yeah, our maximum height is just about here, which is nowhere near the top of the tower. Um, but if you look up there, you can see the moon we'll be trying to get. If I get the angle right. See? There it is. So yeah, basically you just have to jump off Top Hat Tower to get it. Uh, which is not tricky. It's entirely doable. Uh, and the free running is also on top of Top Hat Tower. So I'm just going to warp up there. Just to simplify things a little bit. And then we should have all of the moons in Bonneton. Except for the Hintart moon, which we'll be getting later when we get to where it actually is. Okay, so free running is over here. Uh, as usual, it's fairly easy. Uh, the fact that we're stuck crouching doesn't matter too much in a race because you're supposed to mostly go in straight lines. So even though we have trouble doing precise platforming fast, you don't have to do precise platforming for most of these. And we have Cappy, so we don't have too much to worry about. I don't know why I threw Cappy at the beginning there instead of 
you know, doing what I wanted to do, but whatever. So yeah, the golden Koopa there is the new one uh, in this race, and they do a lot of like more advanced movement tactics the way Mario can, unlike the other Koopas, so it's much harder. Although, you know, it's not really causing much of a problem. There we go. Yeah, for the most part, the free running is not hard. Uh, that one we just did first try. I, th I think under normal circumstances, I did them all first try, but we may have some trouble with later ones while crouching. But the Cap Kingdom one is, is just, it's not hard. It's just not. <laughs> Okay, and the last moon we'll be getting is this one over here. So basically what you just have to do is jump off the edge and not miss. Uh, I often miss, so hopefully I won't this time. There we go. Yeah! Under the big one's brim. So that's moon 16? I think? Yes. So see, 30 out of 31. The only one we haven't got is this one here, which is the Cab Kingdom Hintard. So we'll be doing that one later when we actually get to the place the hint art is referring to. Um, so we can't actually do it right now, but... I mean, we could go there right now, but we're going to do the kingdoms in order, so we're not going to. <laughs> uh, also, I think I probably want to come over here. I haven't spent all my purple coins for some reason. I have all the purple coins for here, so I can spend them all. You can buy this froggy here, and I can buy the model of Top Hat Tower. Uh, I'll show off where those actually show up, just so we all know. And then that's probably going to be this video, I reckon. And Bonneton B-Side is done. I'm calling it B-Side because that's a Celeste reference. Because I'm a dork. <laughs> okay, so over here, all the souvenirs you can buy show up in, on the Odyssey in various ways. So you have the sticker for Bonneton on the outside, just there. Um, the stickers are in pre program locations, I think. And yeah, Bonneton one shows up just there, and you can see it whenever you look at the Odyssey. And if you come inside the Odyssey here, you can see the, f the souvenirs that we've bought. There we go. We got a Froggo. Uh, if you want, you can bounce on the Froggo. And we've got the model of Top Hat Tower over here, which you can also bounce on if you want. None of these really do anything, although I can't demonstrate it right now because you can't do it while crouching. But if you sit in one of these chairs, Cappy like sits in the other chair, and then she goes and looks at all the souvenirs, and it's really cute. But you can't do it while crouching, so we won't be doing it in this run. <laughs> Not that it matters, because there's no actual reason to go inside the Odyssey during the game besides looking at souvenirs. There's no nothing you can gain by doing that. Uh, so let's cash in these moons, and then we're going to just make our way forward to the Cascade Kingdom. Bam! That might have unlocked a new product. It didn't. Okay. I think it might be after you've done the 95 more we need to get to the next area. I'm not sure. It might even be after that. Anyway, so we're advancing to the Cascade Kingdom now. And in the next video, we'll be collecting its A-side moons. As in the ones that you can do without opening the moon rock. <laughs> uh, pretty simple. Dun, dun, dun. Oh jeez, I skipped the cutscene too quick and had to get a loading screen instead. Uh, there are a lot of moons lying around in Cascade Kingdom now. They don't actually show up until after you've done the story here, like most of them. But because we did do the story, everything is pretty much just open to us now. Also, the music here is great. But that's for next time. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you enjoyed if you did. If you didn't, I'm, I'm sorry about that. You might enjoy the next one better. Bye!